In this video, you will learn to graph and solve linear inequalities. So for example, if you're given y is greater than negative 2, and you were told to graph this. So what you're doing is you have a number line, and you are shading in all the possible solutions for y. So we know that y could be anything bigger than negative 2. So it could be negative 1. All right, it could be 0. It could be 1. Anything bigger than negative 2, I shade in. And it keeps going forever, so I draw a little arrow at the end. Now the question is, what happens right at negative 2? Well, at negative 2, negative 2 is not a solution because negative 2, if I plug that in for y, negative 2 is not greater than negative 2. It could be anything just super small above that. It could be like negative 1.9999999, something really close to negative 2, but not quite. That would still be a true statement. So the way to express this in uh, math notation when I'm graphing this is I need to put a circle around the negative 2. So it's an open circle, and this shows that I'm not shading in the negative 2, because negative 2 is not a solution. So this means that it's getting infinitely close to negative 2, but it's never actually equaling negative 2. So this would be how I graph this expression. If you had the same thing, but now you have greater than or equal to negative 2, once again we're shading in all the possible solutions. So y could be greater than negative 2. So anything bigger than negative 2, I shade in. But also, negative 2 would be a solution in this case, because it could be equal to negative 2. So I'm shading in all the solutions, and negative 2 is a solution, so I shade in negative 2. So I have, an, I have a circle, but I shade in that circle. So the circle means I'm starting at negative 2. And then the arrow shows that that's the direction my answers will be in. Now, what if you had less than? So y is less than negative 2. Well, same idea. We're shading in all the correct solutions for y, anything that would make this a true statement. So anything smaller than negative 2 would be an answer. So anything to the left of negative 2 is smaller than negative 2. So I shade in everything to the left. Now the question is, what happens at negative 2? Well, I only shade in negative 2 if negative 2 is a solution. If I plug a negative 2 in, I have negative 2 is less than negative 2. That is not a true statement. So negative 2 is not a solution. So I don't shade in negative 2, but I draw a circle around it to show that the answer gets infinitely close to negative 2 but it never actually equals negative 2. And then same thing but now with less than or equal to. The less than or equal to sign means that it will, will include the negative 2. So it's going to shade in the negative 2 and then everything to the left would also be an answer. So the key is um, greater than, so greater than or greater than or equal to uh, both of those I'm going to shade in to the right. Okay, And then if it's less than or less than or equal to, I'm going to shade in to the left. So that is how we know the direction. And then as far as if it's an open circle or a closed circle, if it's uh, greater than, I'm trying to figure out where to write this, greater than or less than, that would be an open circle. If it has an equal sign to it, greater than or equal to, and then less than or equal to, that would be a closed circle. All right, so that's how you can determine which direction, and then open versus closed circle. All right, here is kind of a trick question. We have three is greater than or equal to k, and you're told to graph this. So when you graph, you're going to look at the variable. So 
the variable k, if I uh, read this with k first, so the k first, then the 3 next, the k is smaller than or equal to 3. All right, I just change the, the order, so k comes first, 3 comes second, the mouth still faces the 3. So in reality, this expression is k is less than or equal to 3. So when I graph this, I'm graphing all the possible answers for k. Well, k is smaller than 3 or equal to 3. So my shading starting at 3 is going to go to the left. Okay, so we shade into the left, and it's going to be a closed circle because the less than or equal to sign. All right, because of the equal sign, it's going to be shaded in because k could equal 3 as well. All right, so be careful that you're reading this from the variable. So if it helps you, you can put the variable first, like we did right here. Okay, next we have x is not equal to 3. And we are told to graph this inequality. Well, if it's not equal to 3, that means it could be bigger than 3, or it could be smaller than 3. But the only thing is it cannot equal 3. So I will not shade in the number 3, but instead put a circle around it, showing that I'm not going to shade in the 3. So this here would be my solution if I were to graph it. Next we have what well, looks kind of complicated, but it's not too bad. Uh, we have 2 is less than or equal to x and is less than 4. So we can think of this in two ways, but the easiest way is to see that x is literally between 2 and the 4 with this statement. All right, x is between the 2 and the 4. So when I graph this, I shade in everything between 2 and 4 like this. And then my, my uh, circles I determine by looking at the inequality. So right here is less than or equal to. So because of the equal sign I have a closed circle. And then here we have less than 4. So I have an open circle because it's not equal to 4. And I just shade in everything in between. So if this were like 3 is less than or equal to um, x is less than 7, I'd shade in everything between 3 and 7. And then the, the circles would be as indicated here with the inequality sign. Now that we know how to graph inequalities, we are now going to work with solving inequalities. If you can solve an equation, you can solve an inequality because they are exactly the same with only one exception. The only difference between solving an equation and an inequality is when you multiply or divide by a negative number. When you do that, you must switch the inequality. So here is that concept illustrated. So here we have a true statement, 3 is less than 8. Now with equations or inequalities, I can add, subtract, multiply, divide, whatever I want, as long as I'm doing it to both sides. So here, if I wanted to, I could multiply both sides by a negative 2. All right, if I do that, on the left side, I have 3 times negative 2, which is negative 6. On the right side, I'm going to have negative 16. Notice that this will now not be a true statement because negative 6 is not less than negative 16. Negative 16 is less than negative 6. So when we multiplied by that negative, it made this into a false statement. So when I multiply or divide by a negative number, I must switch the inequality. So instead of the less than sign, I now need to make it a greater than sign. So that is the only difference when you're solving an inequality statement. So for example, let's say we had 2x is greater than or equal to 10. I solve this the exact same way that I'd solve an equation. Here we have 2 times x, so to get rid of the 2, I need to divide. So I divide both sides by 2. On the left side, I have x, and on the right side, I have 5. 
So my answer is x is greater than or equal to 5. All right, example 2, however, um, is still the same solving, but here we will need to switch the inequality. Because we have a negative 2 times x, and to get rid of it, I divide by negative 2. So because here I'm dividing by negative 2, I'll need to switch the inequality from a greater than to a less than. So on the left side, this will give me x. On the right side, I have 10 over negative 2, which is negative 5. But I need to switch the inequality from greater than to a less than. Example 3, we have 2x is greater than or equal to negative 10. So here, we need to divide both sides by 2. And we have x on the left, negative 5 on the right. But here, we're not dividing by a negative number. We're dividing by a positive 2. So no need to switch the inequality. It's going to remain a greater than sign. So my answer is x is greater than or equal to negative 5. Example 4. We have negative 2x greater than or equal to negative 10. To solve this, I need to get rid of the negative 2. And I do that by dividing both sides by negative 2. Now when I divide, the negative 2's cancel out. On the right side, negative divided by negative would give me a positive 5. So I have x on the left, 5 on the right, and because I'm dividing by this negative 2 right here, I need to switch the inequality to a less than or equal to sign. So my answer is x is less than or equal to 5. Example 5, now we have x over 2 is less than 5. So here we need to get rid of the 2 with the x. And this is saying that we have x divided by 2. So to get rid of division, I multiply. So I multiply both sides by a 2, and the 2's will cancel. I have x on the left, and then 5 times 2, which is 10 on the right. So my answer is x is less than 10. Example 6, we have x divided by negative 2 is less than 5. So here we need to multiply by a negative 2 to get these to cancel. Multiply over here by negative 2 as well. So I have x on the left, negative 10 on the right, but because I am multiplying by this negative 2, I need to switch the inequality. So instead of a less than sign, it's a greater than sign. So my answer is x is greater than negative 10. So once again, the rule is if I'm multiplying or dividing by a negative number, I need to switch the inequality. Example 7. To get rid of the 2 in the bottom, I need to multiply both sides by 2. So to do that, that will cancel. x is on the left. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10 on the right. But even though there's a negative here with the 5, I'm multiplying by a positive 2. So because I'm multiplying by a positive, there is no need to switch the inequality. So this would remain as x is less than negative 10. Here we have x divided by negative 2 is less than negative 5. To get rid of the negative 2 in the bottom, I need to multiply both sides by negative 2. So on the left side, the negative 2's cancel. So I have x on the left, then negative 5 times negative 2 is a positive 10 on the right. And because I am multiplying by this negative 2, that is when I switch the inequality. So I switch from a less than to a greater than. My answer is x is greater than 10. Example 9. We have x plus 3 is less than 10. These are all solved the same way that we'd solve an equation. Here we are subtracting 3 from both sides to get rid of the plus 3. So my answer would be x on the left, 7 on the right, less than sign in the middle. So it's x is less than 7. And no need to change the inequality because I'm not adding, or sorry, I'm not multiplying or dividing by a negative. I'm subtracting, but that is not multiplication or division. So this would be fine as it is.
Example 10, I have x minus 3 is less than 10. To get rid of subtraction, I need to add 3 to both sides. So we'd have x on the left, and then 10 plus 3 is 13 on the right. So my answer is x is less than 13. Example 11, we're getting into a little more, little more difficult of problems, uh, but the solving is the same as you would with equations. So here I need to simplify both the left and the right side. So here I have the three, I need to distribute and multiply it by the two and the negative y. So three times two is six, three times negative y is negative three y. And then over here, uh, we have a negative in front of the y minus 4. So we can think of this as a 1 being in front. So I have a negative 1 times y, which is negative y. And negative 1 times negative 4 is a positive 4. So we have negative y plus 4 on the right side. So from here, I can bring the y's to the same side. And the easiest way would probably be to bring the 3y over to the right. So if I wanted to, to bring that over, I can add 3y. And when I do that on the left side, negative 3y plus 3y would cancel. So I have 6 on the left, and then negative y plus 3y. Uh, we have negative 1 plus 3 would give me a positive 2y, and that is plus 4. All right, and then to finish this off, I do reverse order of operations. So I begin with addition and subtraction first. So we see the plus 4. I need to get this away from the y by subtracting 4. So that cancels. I have 2y on the right. On the left, I have 6 minus 4, which is 2. And now to get rid of the 2 with the y, this is 2 times y. So I do the opposite of multiplication, which is division. So I divide both sides by 2. I have y on the right. And then I have 2 over 2, which is 1 on the left. So here I have y is greater than or equal to y. And usually you put the y first. So the y first, the 1 second. And the sign needs to be facing the 1. So y is less than or equal to 1. Example 12, we once again need to do reverse order of operations. So all the steps are the same with inequalities as it is with equations. The only difference is when you multiply or divide by a negative number. So here it's tempting to look at the negative 1 and think we need to add that first, but that's not what we do because the division sign acts as a grouping symbol. So all of this on the top is as if it's in parentheses. So we do the top last. All right, but the negative 2 in the bottom I can get rid of. So I can move that over and I do that by doing the opposite of dividing by negative 2, which is multiplying. So I multiply both sides by negative 2. When I do that, the negative 2's cancel. I have 3x minus 1 on the left, and then 5 times negative 2 is negative 10 on the right. So notice I'm multiplying by a negative. So that is the one time when I need to switch the inequality from a less than to now it's going to be a greater than. So from here, I can continue with reverse order of operations. We have 3 times x, and we have a minus 1. Well, subtraction we would do first, so get rid of the minus 1 by adding 1 to both sides. When I do that, the negative 1 and plus 1 would cancel. I have 3x on the left, and then negative 10 plus 1 is negative 9 on the right. And then to finish off, here we have 3 times x, so I get rid of the 3 by dividing. When I divide, we now have x on the left, and then negative 9 over 3 is negative 3 on the right. 
And even though there's a negative here, I'm not dividing by a negative. So my answer would still be um, with the same inequality sign. So it's still going to be x is greater than negative 3. Now as we finish, there are some special scenarios to be aware of. So here, for example, we have an inequality and we're told to solve this. So we want to simplify uh, this right side by distributing. So we multiply 3 by x and then 3 times negative 2 to get 3x minus 6. All right, then if you want to bring the 3x over here to the left side with the other 3x, I'd have to subtract. And when I do that, it cancels on the right, which is what I wanted. But on the left, it also cancels. 3x minus 3x is 0. So I have this weird statement where it says 0 is less than negative 6. So this is a false statement, right? 0 is not less than negative 6. If you get a weird statement like this, where the variables are gone, and it's not a true statement, then that means that there is no solution. If there's no solution, there's also no graph. All right, and the no solution symbol, if you wanted to write this in math notation, is a zero with a line through it. That means no solution. One other special kind of situation that you might see is if you solve and get all the way to the end, and it's a true statement. So instead of zero is less than negative six, let's say you had something like four, um, four is greater than or equal to one. Okay, that is a true statement, right? So if you get the same kind of thing, but with a true statement, then that means there is an infinite number of solutions. So what we'd say is that our answer would be all the real numbers. And the shorthand way of writing this in math notation, instead of writing our answer as all real numbers, we use a fancy R like this. And that means all real numbers. So be aware of those two special scenarios. And uh, that concludes our lesson for today. We will see you next time.